Welcome to Black Sheep, where I take a look at entries in video game franchises that were poorly received or controversial among the fans. Now I won't be dwelling on the negative aspects of these games. Instead, I'll be looking in detail at things I like about the games, whether it was the story, gameplay, music, or anything else it contained, and see if they're really deserving of the infamy that they have. For this episode, we'll be looking at Dead Space 3. The Dead Space series made its debut on the PS3, PC, and Xbox 360 in 2008, and brought a horrifying new science fiction game to players everywhere. Developed by Visceral Games and published by Electronic Arts, Dead Space had players take on the role of Isaac Clarke, an engineer who had become trapped on the necromorph-infested ship called the USG Ishimura. This survival horror title featured many elements from other popular horror games of the time, most notably Resident Evil 4, but the game also had many unique features of its own, like the strategic dismemberment system, which helped Isaac defeat his ghoulish foes. Dead Space was a huge critical and commercial success, and it wasn't long until the game received a spin-off title on the Nintendo Wii in 2009 and a proper sequel in 2011. Dead Space 2 improved on nearly every feature from the original game, and also gave the previously mute Isaac Clarke a voice. The acclaim for Dead Space 2 was just as good, if not more so, than the first game, and so Visceral Games began work on the next game in the series, Dead Space 3. Dead Space 3 arrived on consoles and PC early 2013, and many players were eager to return to the harrowing tale of Isaac Clarke. The game featured many new gameplay elements and significantly expanded on the story and lore of the Dead Space universe. The story of Dead Space 3 is by far the longest in the franchise, so let's dive into that first. Some time after the ending of Dead Space 2, Isaac is living alone, having separated from his companion, Ellie. While he's wallowing in his pity and fear, Isaac is approached by two EarthGov operatives, Captain Norton and Sergeant Carver. Norton informs Isaac that he's recruiting him to help him find his missing team, which includes Ellie. As the trio flee, they are attacked by a unitologist zealot named Danik. Danik activates an alien artifact known as a marker and creates yet another necromorph outbreak. Isaac escapes with his new EarthGov companions, and they make their way to Ellie's distress signal. They find Ellie, along with several other characters in the ship wreckage, orbiting the planet of Tau Volantis. The team then discovers that Tau Volantis is supposedly the Marker homeworld, and Isaac and co. head down to the planet's surface to end the threat of the Markers once and for all. While on Tau Volantis, Isaac loses many of his crew fighting off both the necromorphs of the planet and Danik's unitologist soldiers. But eventually Isaac, along with Carver and Ellie, discover the Marker's true purpose. The Markers were created by ancient alien beings known as Brethren Moons, and they launched them to different parts of the galaxy. The populace of each world would be influenced by the Marker, turn into necromorphs, and create a convergence event at which point a brand new Brethren Moon would be created. With this new knowledge, Isaac tries to stop Danik from turning off the machine, which is keeping the Brethren Moon of Tau Volantis frozen in time. But unfortunately, the heroes are unable to stop him. Danik dies seconds after turning off the machine, and the terrifying, enormous Brethren Moon awakens. <laughs> After a grueling battle, Isaac and Carver are successful in reactivating the machine and defeating the alien being. High above the planet, Ellie flies off to Earth, knowing that Isaac and Carver sacrificed everything to save the universe. Isaac, you did it. You really did it. Earth space coordinates confirmed. Shock drive enabled. Standing by. Even though 
though it's been called unfocused by some, I really enjoyed the storyline of Dead Space 3. Yeah. The game finally answered questions many fans had about the lore of the series, and Isaac's character arc over the course of the game made the story an engaging, albeit very intense, ride. To be honest, the only thing about the story of Dead Space 3 that I didn't enjoy was the somewhat forced love triangle between Isaac, Ellie, and Norton. It just seemed so odd to me that Norton kept whining about Isaac liking Ellie when there are so much more important things at stake, namely the fate of the whole galaxy. Aside from Norton, however, I like the cast of Dead Space 3. It's got more characters than any other game in the series, but it never felt too crowded for me, and by the end of the game there are only a few characters left standing. Danik, while by no means one of the strongest video game antagonists, is dangerous and crazy enough to be a credible threat for the game's characters. The whole Unitology faction is quite bonkers, actually, and Danik is no exception. That's just what happens when you mess around with weird-looking alien artifacts, people. Overall, however, I quite enjoyed the story of this game. I love the revelation of the true antagonist of the series, the Brethren Moons, and I also liked how we learned more about the purpose of the Markers, the Necromorphs, as well as the icy planet of Tau Volantis. Dead Space 3's runtime is just shy of stretching the story too thin, but in the end it all came together and I enjoyed the ending of the game. It's all going down, everything. You have to go. No! You two get out of here. Go back to Earth space. Tell them what we found. I'm staying. That's all I got left. You can't stop them, Carver. Not without me. I'm the marker killer, remember? Isaac. I turned my back on the world because I was afraid of what needed to be done. Ellie, I'm not afraid anymore. As a side note, I want to mention that Dead Space 3 received a DLC expansion that served as an epilogue to the story. I haven't played it for myself, but I do know that it revealed that Isaac and Carver are in fact alive and make their way back to Earth, only to find it's under attack by multiple Brethren Moons. So if the series does get another installment, it's certainly set up for it. The gameplay of the Dead Space series has been pretty consistent across the board. Using your tools to efficiently dispatch enemies is just as important as ever, and resources are spaced out enough that fighting to survive is always pretty intense. I have to admit, I actually cranked up the difficulty to hard for Dead Space 3, because I found it far too generous with health and ammo on the lower difficulty settings, so much so that I had no free inventory space. But after bumping up the difficulty, the game was on the same level of survival horror as the previous games. The Necromorphs in Dead Space 3 are as terrifying as ever, and along with some of the series' regular monstrosities, several new ones make their horrifying debut. Most notable are the Feeders people who ate necromorph flesh and have become ghoulish monsters themselves. The sheer numbers of feeders is what makes them dangerous, and the encounters with them created some of the most memorable moments in the series. Other horrible enemies like the regenerating Hydra and the final battle against the Brethren Moon also made for some pretty spectacular boss fights. Dealing with the Necromorph threat hasn't changed, using your stasis and kinetic powers to help you as you shoot off limbs with your weapons to do the most damage. Nearly all the series' previous weapons are back, but how you go about getting them is very different. Aside from a few starter weapons that the game gives you, any weapon you obtain in Dead Space 3 has to be crafted. Gone are the shops and upgrade nodes. Instead, you have to gather all sorts of scrap and weapon parts to craft new weapons for yourself. Admittedly, this took a bit of getting used to, but after a while, I found myself enjoying the weapon crafting. While I always held on to my trusty plasma cutter, I experimented with things like a shotgun mixed with a grenade launcher, and my personal favorite creation, a ripper blade with a bolt gun. I don't like how they tried to make microtransactions part of the game with the crafting system, but those are entirely optional as I found plenty of crafting and upgrade materials just by searching around, as well as using the very handy scanner robots. 
This whole system reinforces the idea that Isaac is a brilliant engineer, and I rather like it. Along with the weapon crafting, the game also features a brand new addition in the form of side missions. Several times throughout the campaign, Isaac can investigate areas that aren't tied to the main objective. But once he clears this optional area, you are rewarded with loads of goodies. I found the side missions to actually contain some of the hardest fights in the game, but the rewards are generally worth the struggle. These side missions add significantly to the game's runtime, so if you can't get enough of the necromorph blasting gameplay, Dead Space 3 has you covered. The Dead Space games have always been pretty visually stunning, and the third title has some of the most jaw-dropping moments you'll find in the genre. I particularly love the spacewalk sequence in the first third of the game, as it was by far the most breathtaking of Isaac's ventures into the vacuum of space. Some of my other favorite moments included the nail-biting descent onto Tau Volantis and the eerie architecture of the Tau Volantian machine. The textures and character models occasionally have hiccups, but in general I thought the game has some of the most impressive visuals of its time. Jason Graves, the lead composer for the Dead Space series, returned for the third game, along with new composer James Hannigan, and the results are pretty chilling. The character themes, boss battle music, and cinematic scores hit all the right notes and make every encounter and scenario incredibly engaging. Only once in my entire playthrough did I find the soundtrack a little overblown, as I was just facing off against an easy single necromorph, but on the whole I found the soundtrack very excellent, and the tunes in the game's finale were particularly great. So with all this in mind, why is Dead Space 3 considered a black sheep? The game, while still successful, had fewer sales than previous titles in the series, and many felt that this third title abandoned horror in favor of action. The game does have more action-focused set pieces for sure, and the game also has you fighting off against Danik's men with cover-based shooting, giving the game a bit of a different feel from before. However, I still found Dead Space 3 to have plenty of scary moments. There are the aforementioned feeders, whose shrill cries and disturbing skeletal bodies made me feel very uneasy. And there were also freaky moments like getting sucked into the belly of a giant necromorph. The Dead Space games are similar to many other survival horror titles of the time, in that they do have more third-person shooter elements, and there are more action set pieces, but I still think it's very much a horror game, and a very intense and fun one at that. It's a similar argument that people had with other horror games like Resident Evil 6, and don't worry, there's a Black Sheep video for that game in the future. But I still find the intensity of these games to be incredible. More than any other game in the franchise, Dead Space 3 throws hordes of necromorphs at you throughout the campaign, and just barely surviving some of the encounters and desperately searching for health and ammo gave this game the feeling of a true survival horror title to me. The game takes some obvious influences from other horror stories like The Thing, but it also has some more subtle references to other horror works like those of H.P. Lovecraft. I feel that the horror atmosphere is still very much there in Dead Space 3, and the game has great moments of pacing, like when you first crash on Tau Volantis and are seeking refuge from the blistering cold of the surface. The addition of co-op was also the cause of some concern, and while I played the game in single player, I'm sure the co-op mode makes some of the game's encounters more dynamic, and maybe in some ways more intense. The feeling of working together to survive can be a very tense one indeed, as I found in games like Resident Evil 5, and I'm sure the same is true for Dead Space 3. Co-op is actually something Visceral Games wanted to include in the series since it began, so I'm glad they made it work for this game, and if they do make a Dead Space 4, maybe they'll decide to make an even better horror-focused co-op campaign. I truly did enjoy my time with Dead Space 3, and there were only a couple things about it that I disliked, like the microtransactions and the occasional wonky line of dialogue. I support you, John. Finishing something that should have been done a long time ago. Well, stop it! I still think I like the first game the best, but I did enjoy the third game more than I enjoyed Dead Space 2. 
As for what's next for the franchise, it's a little unknown at the moment. Visceral Games is still developing titles for EA, but recently they've only helped with other franchises like Army of Two and the popular Battlefield series. EA hasn't denied any plans for a fourth installment in the Dead Space series, so there is still very much hope for a new game in this science fiction horror franchise. I would really like to see a new Dead Space game, especially after the DLC expansion revealed that Isaac is still alive and Earth is under attack by a horrific alien threat. It may happen soon or it may be a ways off, but I'm very hopeful that the series will receive a proper conclusion with Dead Space 4. Until then, we can keep enjoying the amazing, but very scary adventures of Isaac Clarke. Thank you for watching this episode of Black Sheep. What are your thoughts on Dead Space 3? Any other Black Sheep games you want me to take a look at? Feel free to share in the comments below. Until next time, keep having great adventures, everyone!